Okay, so the rates of reaction always depends on what we call collision theory. So collision theory says that in order for a reaction to take place, the molecules must collide. And when they collide, they must collide with the right amount of energy in the right orientation. So the rate of reaction will depend on the number of collisions that is successful. Okay, so the more successful collisions we have, the faster the rate of reaction. So now, the energy that we need for that successful collision, we call the activation energy. Okay, so that is the minimum energy that's needed for the reaction to take place. So if I plot that on a graph of enthalpy, which is the energy needed, and the reaction pathway, if I start with a bunch of reactants, okay, so those are my reactants, and they have a certain amount of energy, they need to overcome a specific amount to then become products. The amount that they need to overcome is going to be the activation energy. So that energy goes from the minimum amount that we started with as reactants up to the maximum that we needed. So this amount here would be my activation energy. And we usually abbreviate that as capital E A. Okay. So now this is an exothermic reaction because we started with a lot of energy and we ended with less, so a whole bunch escaped. And then if we look at one where we start with less energy in my reactants and we end with more energy in the products, the amount still needs to be overcome, okay? But now the activation energy is still from the reactants that we started with up to the maximum amount, okay, even though the products ended with more. So this is now how much energy we need for the whole reaction to occur, even though our products ended up with more energy, so this is an endothermic reaction. Okay, so we can plot our activation energy on curves like this, okay, and that would tell us how much energy needs to be overcome in order for us to have a successful collision for a successful reaction. Okay, so now there are different factors that affect the rate of reaction, and those factors would be concentration and pressure using a catalyst, and the temperature. So if we first look at concentration, if I have a higher concentration, what that means is I have a whole lot more particles, okay? Because if I have a container and I have a certain concentration, it means that there are a certain number of particles in that space. And if I increase that concentration, it means I added a whole lot more particles. So now these particles here are so much closer together and their chances of colliding are much higher. So there will be more frequent collisions and the more frequent collisions we have, the faster the rate of reaction, okay? Because our rate will always depend on the number of successful collisions. So the more collisions we can have, the more they're likely they're going to be successful, so the faster the rate of reaction, okay? So a higher concentration would increase the rate of reaction. If we went the other way and we decreased the concentration, then there's less particles, so less collisions, so a slower rate of reaction, okay? And now if I say pressure, pressure would be exactly the same, okay? Because pressure is if I decrease the volume of an area, it means I have more particles in there because I've increased the pressure, and then there's gonna be more collisions. So an increase in pressure would increase the rate of reaction because there's more collisions. A decrease in pressure would decrease the rate of reactions. So concentration and pressure 
are exactly the same in terms of their effect on rate of reaction. A catalyst is something that will speed up the rate of reaction by providing an alternative pathway that will lower the activation energy. So over here we had a specific amount of energy, okay? A catalyst will lower that amount, okay? And that catalyst will increase the rate of reaction while remaining unchanged. So any catalyst, the definition of a catalyst is that it increases the rate of reaction while remaining unchanged, okay, by providing an alternative pathway and lowering the activation energy. So if I had to plot that on a graph, okay, the same graph that I had before of my enthalpy and my reaction pathway, means I'm going to start with reactants and end with products and it's going to overcome a certain amount of energy. Okay, so now this is the activation energy, remember? Okay, so that is then our Ea. And now with a catalyst, instead of having that maximum amount, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a different pathway and lower the activation energy. Okay, so now this would be the activation energy with a catalyst. And it's much lower than the original activation energy because of that new pathway. And now we say that a catalyst can be homogeneous or heterogeneous, okay? And if it's homogeneous or homogeneous, what that means is that both the reactants and the catalyst are in the same phase. Okay, so what that means is they would both be liquids, for example, or both gases or both solids. If they're heterogeneous, what that means is my reactants are in one phase and the catalyst is in another. So my reactants could be a liquid, for example, and then the catalyst would be a solid. Okay? Or a liquid with a gas or a solid with a gas, anything like that. They are in different phases. But the catalyst would always remain unchanged at the end of it. It's just there to speed up turning those reactants into products. Okay, and then if I look at temperature. Now, temperature as well as the catalysts, can also be used explaining a graph, by, can also be explained by using a graph, okay? And that graph that we use is called the Boltzmann distribution curve. So now this Boltzmann distribution curve is the number of molecules on our y-axis and energy on the x-axis, okay? Because every particle has a specific energy value, Okay, so we can say that there is a certain number of molecules that has this energy. There's another number of molecules that has this energy, etc. And we can plot to get the shape of a curve that would look something like this. Okay, because there's always a few molecules that have low energy, a large amount of molecules that have a medium amount of energy and less molecules that have higher energy. And we can then plot on there the reactions and how it's going to change with a catalyst as well as with temperature. 
Okay, so remember, I have an activation energy. Okay, so on this graph, on the x-axis, there is a specific number of energy. Okay, amount of energy, and I can plot that as my activation energy. Okay, so let's say that this value over here is the same energy value that I had over there. That means that this would be my activation energy. And now, anything that has an energy that is higher than the activation energy will react. So that means everything over here, higher than that, will react. Because remember, this is the number of molecules. So these are all the molecules that will react because they have an energy higher than the activation energy. Okay, so that's how we read a Boltzmann distribution curve. So now, with a catalyst, remember the catalyst lowers the activation energy. So that means that with a catalyst, I'm going to have a lower energy. I've moved it and I've shifted it down. So I can then draw my activation energy with a catalyst, and now all of these molecules have enough energy to also react. So that's why a catalyst would shift the activation energy and a whole lot more molecules can now react, and that's why it would speed up the rate of reaction. So a catalyst would shift, and that means that there are more molecules have the energy to react. But now what temperature does is temperature actually shifts the curve, okay? Because temperature adds kinetic energy. To the whole system. Okay, so now if I'm adding kinetic energy, I am giving molecules more energy Okay, because I'm adding it to the system and I'm allowing them to be moving faster. So if molecules are moving faster, it means they can collide more. And now, since I've added energy, to those molecules, they would now have enough energy to overcome the activation energy and react. So, it, temperature shifts my whole curve over, okay? So, on this curve, there is a certain number of molecules with a certain energy, okay? So now, I shift and I give more molecules that energy that's going to be higher. So you sh always shift your curve over to the right, okay? And the higher energies are always going to end with more molecules, because I'm giving the molecules more energy. So my curve would always shift over to the right, and it always ends much higher than when I started with. Because now, it means where the original activation energy was, all of these molecules can now also react on top of where they originally were. But shifting the temperature does not do anything to a catalyst. The catalyst would still lower the activation energy and it just means then there is going to be more molecules there that react, if I did both, okay? If I just did a catalyst, I would just move the line back if I just did temperature, I just shift my curve over, and I explain the shift in temperature by saying that we add more energy, so more molecules have the correct amount of energy to create, react, and there's going to be more collisions. So if I look at that in a question that I would get, okay, I have got a Boltzmann distribution curve, and I need to label on there to show the effect of adding a catalyst to the sample, okay, at a constant temperature. So, I have the number of molecules, I have energy, 
So now, the first thing I'm going to do is draw on there where I would have had a catalyst and how many molecules would react. Okay, so remember that the catalyst has a certain activation energy. So I would pick a point on there and I would label that as my activation energy. Okay, because then remember all of those molecules are going to react. And then with a catalyst, I shift the activation energy. So then I'm going to pick a point lower down and that would be my activation energy with a catalyst. And now all of those molecules are going to react. Okay, so I would explain my diagram by saying that I have a certain activation energy and anything higher would react with successful collisions and adding a catalyst lowers the activation energy. So I have more molecules that have the correct amount of energy that can then react. Okay, and if I looked at a different diagram, okay, of another Boltzmann distribution, curve and they've shown the activation energy of a catalyst on there and they want you to mark the activation energy where there's no catalyst okay that would mean that if this is the catalyst without a catalyst it's going to shift the other way and it's going to be further down okay because without a catalyst the activation energy is higher but if i was also asked to draw a new curve to represent what would happen with temperature. If this is my curve, remember now with temperature, I am going to shift my curve over and it ends up being higher. Okay, so you're always going to shift your curve to the right and you end it higher. So if they ask you to draw a curve with temperature, that's what you're going to add. And then if they ask you to indicate the activation energy on your new curve with a catalyst or without it, all you would do is you would then just extend your catalyst line up to your new curve or extend your activation energy without a catalyst up. Okay, so this is your activation energy with no catalyst. Okay, so anytime you have rates of reaction questions, it's usually going to be a Boltzmann distribution curve or they're going to ask you how do you explain using collision theory or they could ask you what is the meaning of a heterogeneous catalyst or a homogeneous catalyst. So hetero meaning that they are both in different phases. So my catalyst is in a different phase to my reactants. And the definition of a catalyst would be something that speeds up your reaction while remaining unchanged, okay, by lowering the activation energy. Okay, so that's all that you would say for those types of questions, and that's all that we would need to know about rates of reactions.